From colorful New Year's fireworks to car engines, and to delicious popcorn in the microwave, explosions are a pretty common occurrence in our everyday lives. They are powerful rapid releases of energy, usually through an expansion of gas. So then, what makes them so powerful? In this video, we will go over the different types of explosions, the chemistry behind explosions, and the applications of explosions. And no, we won't be making them. Mechanical explosions are pretty straightforward. They're just high pressure gas overloading a container, causing the container to burst from the stress. So technically, popcorn popping is considered a mechanical explosion, since it's caused by the expansion of water vapor trapped inside a kernel. A key distinction in the mechanical explosions is that they don't cause any combustion reactions, meaning that generally, no fire will be produced, making mechanical explosions useful in mining, since we won't want chemicals or fire to fill up mine shafts. The more popular explosions are the chemical ones, which we see in pop culture and Hollywood movies. There are two different types, deflagration and detonation. Deflagration is when the flame speed is lower than the speed of sound, so they are less powerful and are usually confined in a container. This works because the chemicals used in deflagrations burn very quickly, producing a lot of high pressure gas that will burst the container it is housed in. For example, in a car engine, small defragrating explosives are made from gasoline to move the pistons that spin the car wheels, and in fireworks, a small shell containing gunpowder is ignited, which bursts to create bright lights and shapes in the sky. Detonation is much more powerful, where the flames travel faster than the speed of sound and are the ones that we usually think of, such as TNT and dynamite. These are much more dangerous, but have some very interesting signs behind them. Let's take TNT for example, which is made up of carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, and some other organic elements. Upon detonation, those molecules form stable gases with strong bonds, such as carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen gas. This means that huge amounts of energy will have to be released. Furthermore, the chemical structure of TNT itself is unstable, since the molecules are packed so closely to the point that they strain on each other. Typically, one gram of TNT can produce up to one liter of gas, which is a thousand times more volume before the explosion, making it a quite a deadly reaction. Most of the more dangerous detonating explosions all contain some sort of carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen molecules inside, just like TNT. And there we have it! Despite the destructive impact left behind by explosions, there is still a lot of interesting science behind them. Mechanical explosions involve highly compressed gas physically bursting from its container, while chemical explosions produce their more destructive force by forming stable bonds. We have nuclear explosions through fusion and fission as well, which I also did a video on. But despite the dangers, explosions are very useful reactions in our day-to-day -day life, as long as they're controlled, of course. I hope that y'all have learned something interesting today. Thank you for your time, and stay hydrated.